What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. If you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In this video, I wanted to take a look at the workflow that I use when working with pipeline and external hardware with Studio One. Okay, so I have a very basic jazz track that was recorded live off the floor. Let's take a listen to this. I'm gonna deactivate the hardware inserts on the kick track, pay special attention to the kick, and I'm gonna bring them in as we're playing. So very bland, very basic sounding kick drum. Huge difference. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Most noticeably, there's a volume increase and also we have some uh, EQ change happening there as well because I'm doing quite a significant boost. If we listen to this in isolation, versus this. So just a huge difference. So when we're working with Pipeline in Studio One, there's a couple different approaches you can take when it comes time to rendering or committing to this. One option that we have is if we select a track header, we can right click and we have the option to transform to rendered audio. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with this option. This gives you the ability to essentially render this in and we can either preserve this so we could go back to it as a starting point, or if we deselected that, then it's quite simply going to render the pipeline inserts into the actual audio file. And if we had a different fader level here, it would basically reset this to zero. So this is not what I'm going to do in this case because I want to be able to go back to this. Also note that I've added some notes here in the text section of pipeline for both of these instances where I've written down exactly what this is in case I need to recall this. Now the idea here is quite simple. I want to do my analog processing as the first one or two inserts in my signal chain. And then I might wanna add digital plugins after this, but I wanna keep these deactivated, but I wanna keep them in line in case I need to recall this and make any changes. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna do a really kind of old school approach over here, but it's something that works perfectly for me is I've created a new mono track. I've named this Kick Print. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the input section. If we scroll down to the very bottom, we have the option to choose tracks. I can actually choose the kick track. Now what this means is that this track's input is now set to this track's output. So a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, any plugins that we have on this track, they are going to be rendered into this file as it gets recorded in real time. Also any volume levels, either static or anything that's automated, that will be rendered as well. Now, I happen to know that the static level of where I had this set was around minus 2.7. I usually make a note of these things, but I was just basically tucking this into the mix. But when I want to print this, because of the workflow I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero this fader back out to Unity Gain. Okay, so once we have this set up, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna do one thing really quickly. In my presets, I've already done uh, an automatic calculation to see if I need any offset. But when you have really excessive amounts of boost, it, that could shift the phase a little bit. So I'm gonna do another ping. We're gonna go into auto mode and you see that change that to minus five. And we'll go to the RC500 and I'm gonna do another ping and this change to minus three. Okay, so now what this is telling me is that I should have a perfectly sample accurate print once I do this. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna just come down to my settings over here and make sure that takes the layers isn't activated. And I'm just gonna go ahead and record enable this track. In fact, let's solo both of these out. And I like to make sure that tape style is not on so I'm not double monitoring this track. And let's go ahead and lay this down. So we have a significant difference in terms of level and that's okay because that's something we can adjust with the fader. So that should be enough for sake of demonstration. Okay, so the next step is now that I've done this, I'm gonna just come out of record mode, I'm going to deactivate both of these inserts. Now on this kick track, I'm gonna to go to the layers section here. If you're not seeing this, make sure you open up the inspector. We're gonna to go to layer and I'm gonna add a layer. Now I can choose to leave this layer name as layer two or if I wanted to, I could rename it. Let's rename this. Um, We'll rename this kick print. I'm gonna drag this audio file, I'm just gonna drag it straight up here. 
And that's kind of locked itself in time because it's one of the features of Studio One that you can drag things from one track to another and it'll kind of keep it locked on the timeline. So now what ends up happening is if I need to go back to my main layer, if I ever needed to recall this, I could come back to this layer over here and I could reactivate these plugins, take note of my text over here and recall these settings manually on the hardware. But once I'm kind of happy with this, the whole idea is that I want to be working off of layer two with these deactivated. And then if I want to do anything else, like let's say I wanted to use a pro EQ for something and maybe I wanted to add a filter of some sort, a little bit of a low cut, anything that I want to do, maybe we'll add a high cut too, then I can continue on. And this is basically just replacing the audio event. Also note that if we take a look at this layer, I did an event gain adjustment to bring this level down a little bit. This was brought down by minus 2.6. And that is quite simply gain staging into the analog domain so that I'm not hitting my converters too hard and everything is gain staged the way I need it to be. But on the actual main layer, if we go to kick print, we don't have any change in our event gain. Now what I would do is any processing that I want to do with plugins, this would happen downstream, and I would blend this into the mix. So that sits pretty good for me. Now I might bring that one down with a little bit of automation or I would snip that actual event and bring it down a couple dB. But this is the workflow that I've been using when working with Pipeline. And the idea is that if I need to recall things, I can recall them. I just have to basically dial in the same settings and this is either gonna happen with a picture that I've stored in the preset. And another thing to mention is my base level presets all have this text in it. So all I have to do is really change the numbers. It's like in this case, nine, 30, four, whatever the numbers are, I'll just update that. But this is the workflow that I've been using when working with Pipeline. And I've been really forcing myself to get as much of the tone as I can when I need to go through hardware. And I really have been trying to do that as the first one, two, or even three inserts in my chain. And then I will just do it this way. I will print it to a new track and I will just drag that track to a new layer. And then I have kind of the peace of mind that if I do need to go back, let's say the client says, oh, that's a little bit too much, then I can either revisit this entirely and I could add some plugins into the chain and try to do things digitally, or I could go back in to layer one and just dial this in or make a slight change. Maybe I've overcooked something done a little bit too much boost or something like that. Regardless, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.